Hey everyone. In the last episode, we introduced the notion of variance. Today, we will notice some basic properties of variance, and we will practice with this notion. To recall, suppose we have a random variable x whose expected value or mean is mu. The random variable x can take different values with different probabilities, but they are centered around the expected value, mu. The variance of x measures the average spread of these values on each side from the center, from mu. Variance of x is denoted this way and can be computed by first looking at the deviation of x from its mean. Then we square the deviation to get rid of the sign. We would like the deviation to be always non-negative, no matter whether it deviates to the right or to the left. And then we take the expected value. This is the definition of variance. If we expand the square and then simplify, as we did in the last episode, we get an alternative formula for the variance, which sometimes is more convenient. It's expected value of x squared minus expected value of x all squared. Squaring the deviation messes up with the units. For instance, if x is the age of a fossil in years, then variance will be measured in years squared, and that's inconvenient. Now, to get to the original units, we can take the square root, and the result is called the standard deviation, denoted sigma of x. It is the square root of the variance. For instance, x can be the age of a fossil, or more precisely, our belief about the age of the fossil. If we expect this fossil to be one million years old, then mu, the expected value of x, equals one million. But the dating mechanisms are never precise. And if the average error of the dating mechanism is 10,000 years, then sigma of x, the standard deviation, equals 10,000. Now let's notice some basic properties of variance. First, if x is a constant random variable, this means that for any outcome, it gives the same value, c. What do you think is the variance of x? It should be zero. The constant random variable always gives the same value, so it doesn't deviate at all. To see this rigorously, the expected value of such a constant random variable equals c, the value that it always takes. And so according to this formula, the variance of x is this, x equals c all the time, mu equals c. So c minus c is zero, expected value of zero is zero. And we prove this. Now remember the linearity property of expectation? Expectation of a sum equals the sum of expectations, like this. Now here's a wake up call. This does not hold for variance. In general, the variance of a sum needs not be the same as the sum of variances. To see this, let's take any random variable x and choose y to be minus x. Then x plus y is zero and the variance of zero is zero. However, variance of x and variance of y could be positive. And so this needs not be an equality. Next, what happens if we add the same constant to a random variable? Let's say we add 10 to every value of the random variable. How will variance change? If you add 10 to all the values, all these values shift. But variance measures the spread. The spread is the same. It's just the whole picture shifts. So variance of x plus c should be the same as variance of x. To see this, let's compute this. By definition, to compute the variance of x plus c, we take this random variable, x plus c, subtract its expected value, take the square, and take the expected value of the result, like this. Now, expected value of x plus c by linearity of expectation. That's expected value of x plus expected value of c, but c is constant. So its expected value is simply c. Then c cancels here. And we get expected value of x minus its expectation squared. And this is, by definition, variance of x. So we prove this. Next, what happens if you multiply all values of x by the same constant? It is tempting to say that this will be c times the variance of x. It is almost correct, but not exactly correct. 
the variance involves squaring things. And so the correct answer will be C squared times variance of X. Let's check this quickly. To compute the variance, we'll use the alternative formula. It's expected value of the random variable squared minus expected value of the random variable and then all squared. Now this is C squared X squared and C squared is a constant that we can pull out of expected value. Similarly here, C is a constant that we can pull out of the expected value. So we get C squared expected value of X squared minus C expected value of X all squared. We can pull C outside the square here and we get this. And this by the alternative formula equals the variance of X. So we get C squared times variance as promised. It's a little annoying that multiplying X by 10, the variance blows up by 100. That problem is fixed by the notion of standard deviation. Remember, standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So if we take square root on both sides, C squared will become C. So as a corollary, the standard deviation of Cx equals C times the standard deviation of X. And now that we noticed these basic properties, let's practice. Let's consider the following version of a matching problem. Suppose I return N graded exams to N students at random. Just shuffle the exams and return without looking. How many students on average will receive their own exam? In other words, what is the expected number of students who receive their own exam? The number of students who receive their own exam is a random variable. Let's denote it by x. Now let's break down x by the student. Let's decompose x into a sum where each term is 0 or 1. 1 if that particular student receives their own exam and 0 otherwise. The sum of 1 or zeros will give us the number of the students who receive their own exam. Now, what's the probability that a given student, let's say Alice, receives her own exam? Well, there are n exams total, and Alice can receive any of them equally likely. So the probability that she receives her own is 1 over n. And the probability that she does not receive her own exam is the complementary probability, 1 minus 1 over n. So the expected value of each term in this sum, by definition, is value times probability plus value times probability. And we get one over n. Now we use linearity of expectation. The expected value of x is the sum of the expected values, each of which equals one over n. So we have n terms, each of which equals one over n, and the answer is one. On average, one student receives their own exam. And now let's compute the variance. Let's check how much the number of these lucky students deviates from its mean, from one. It's going to be trickier because unlike expectation, the variance of a sum does not always equal the sum of variances. We will use the alternative formula for the variance, which is expected value of x squared minus expected value of x squared. It's convenient to use it because we already know that expected value of x is one. So this is one squared or one. And the only thing we have to compute is expected value of x squared. Let's do it. x is the sum. Let's square it and expand. We can write the square as the sum times itself, just with different indices. And then as you multiply one sum by the other, you have a lot of cross terms, specifically n squared cross terms. So it will be a sum over indices i and j, each of them can be between one and n of the product x i x j. In these n squared indices, sometimes i equals j and you get x i squared. Let's isolate this sum separately. 
and the rest of the n squared terms in the sum are the mixed terms. So this is the sum over all i and j that are distinct. There are n square terms in this sum. There are n terms here. And so the remaining n square minus n terms go here. Now we take expectation on both sides. Expected value by linearity can be brought inside the sum and becomes this. Here there are n terms. And here there are n square minus n terms. So we reduced our problem to computing these expected values. Xi can only take values 1 or 0. And if you square that, 1 square is 1, 0 square is 0. So squaring does not change the value of Xi. So this thing is the same as expected value of Xi, which we computed. It's 1 over n. So this first sum is the sum of n terms, each of which equals 1 over n. And so the whole sum equals 1. What about the second sum? Let's compute each expectation separately. xi can take values 1 or 0, and xj can take values 1 or 0. Therefore, the product can also take only values 1 or 0. So the expected value, by definition, is value times the probability plus value times the probability. This term will always be zero, so we can cross it like that. Now, when can the product be equal one? Remember, both xi and xj can only take values one or zero. So for their product to be equal one, both of them have to be one. So this equals probability that xi equals one and xj equals one. What does that really mean? xi equals 1 if student i receives their own exam, and xj equals 1 if student j receives their own exam. So this is a probability that both students i and j receive their own exam. What's the probability of that? Let's say student i is Jose and student j is Alice. What's the probability that both Jose and Alice receive their own exam? Now, in how many ways can this pair of students receive exams? First, let me give the exam to Jose. How many ways are there to do that? N. Once I give an exam to Jose, how many ways are there for Alice to get their exam? N minus one, because I already gave one exam to Jose. So the total number of ways for this pair of students to get an exam is N times N minus one. However, there is only one way for both students to get their own exams. So the probability of that equals 1 divided by the total number of ways. Perfect. We computed each term in this sum. It equals 1 over n times n minus 1. Now, this is the sum of n square minus n terms, each of which equals this. So this sum equals n square minus n times this term. And if you expand the denominator, it is n square minus n2. So this ratio is 1. So the first sum is 1. The second sum is also 1. So we get the expected value of x squared equals 1 plus 1, 2. And the variance of x becomes 2 minus 1, which is 1. And the standard deviation of x is the square root of the variance, which is again 1. So the surprising result of our computation is that no matter how large the class, the expected number of students who get their own exam is 1. And the standard deviation of such lucky students is also 1. Thank you and stay with me for the next episode.